What's up guys, Kyle here again, and today we're gonna check out the Soldano Hot Rod 50. Let's do it. Hope you guys are doing great out there today. If this is your first time here at my channel, my name is Kyle and what I do is I take awesome high gain amps, overdrives, guitars, cabs, speakers, pickups. I record them with a simple SM57 setup and I give you guys the unprocessed audio on your end. So if you're into East Standard thrash riffs, drop C hardcore riffs, and dudes who are thinking about getting a part-time job as an auctioneer after doing these intros, you're in the right place. Consider hitting the like button and subscribing on your way out so you don't miss any more of my stuff. Thanks. All right guys, so today, I get to check out a Soldano Hot Rod 50, and you guys get to watch. Now the Hot Rod 50, it looks like from what I have read online, is supposed to be a single channel 50 watt version of the SLO 100. I don't know how accurate that is. I can say that all three of the amps of uh, by Soldano that I have owned and played have sounded really similar, but there are definitely some inherent differences between them as well. I have an Avenger 100 sitting over there, and then I have the classic SLO 100 sitting down there, and I've really kind of been getting to know the SLO 100 a lot because I'm getting rid of it here tomorrow. But I also have a Hot Rod 50 in my possession until tomorrow, so we're gonna take a quick look at this amp. There is a lot of gain on tap here. This is a simple beast. It's just a single channel. Uh, this does not have the depth mod, and I now understand why people say that the depth mod is a must on these Soldano amps because the amp really doesn't have very much low end to speak of, especially if you hit it with a boost without that depth control. So if you guys are looking on the used market for a, any Soldano amp and you are a fan of a big low end on your guitar amps, you're gonna want that depth mod there for sure. But yeah, I don't really know what else to say about this amp because it just seems like it's supposed to be a single channel 50 watt SLO 100 uh, or SLO circuit. It does high gain very well as you heard in that intro. I was using my Edwards ELP uh, Les Paul custom style guitar with the Lace Dissonant Aggressor, yeah, Dissonant Aggressor, Bill Kelleher signature pickup. And we had the Deadwell Duality Overdrive on in front of it. So we're gonna turn that off. We're gonna put all our controls back to noon. It won't take us long to get through this amp because as you can see, there's literally four EQ controls and a preamp control. But first, to check out the, the slightly more classic tones, I'm actually going to untangle my cable. There we go. We're gonna put it in the low input and see how well this thing handles the classic style also, real quick before we get started, I'm running through my Metza Farba 412 16 ohm cabinet with UK Vintage 30s and Celestian Redbacks in an X pattern. We have an SM57 on the Vintage 30 per usual. Here's how it sounds. All right, so extremely quiet because we have basically no gain on the low input channel. So let's bump it up to noon. And still essentially no gain, but a little bit of breakup. Let's pump it to seven out of 10. Nope, this one goes to 11. So we basically have the gain all the way up before we start to get any sort of uh, even remote saturation. Let's get the presence and the treble up because it's kind of blanket on the speakers now. So 
So yeah, uh, it really doesn't like having the gain crank that much because it darkens things up significantly. I guess a little bit more trouble in presence. <laughs> Doesn't sound very good to my ears, guys. I think I would use that as basically a clean channel. If I was gonna use it at all, because uh, all the clarity disappears, it gets real kind of boxy and muddy, but still doesn't have any sort of sat real saturation going on. So that's the low input. Let's go over to the fun input. That's what she said. All right, so preamp down. Let's get everything back to noon and let's see what this thing is capable of how I'm sure it was meant to be used. There's all our high-end crispness right off the bat. Let's go ahead and pump that gain up even more. Soon as you start pushing the gain on this amp though, it does get very boxy. It's interesting. The other ones don't do it quite as badly. Getting a nice little grind out of it. Let's add some mids. Wow, the mids really woke it up. Let's actually pull some of that presence back. That was a huge difference. So definitely a uh, fairly saturated, crunchy sound with the gain at about three out of 11. So let's put it up to noon where it's at five. And we're getting some good saturation as it is right there, but we have basically no low end. Let's go ahead and just pump that bass right up. Much better, much better low end response, pretty much right off the bat just by pushing that low end forward a little bit. All right, so still a little bit boxy. Let's open it up with those mids a little bit more. I'm gonna pull the treble back a tad and bump the presence to see if we can just kind of get a little bit more of an overall sizzle from this amp. That sounds pretty good to me. Let's bump up that gain. We're now at seven out of 11. All right, so we got a lot of mid bite for sure, but it still is just a little muffled. It seems like when you start to push the gain on these Soldanos, they really do get very muffled. So we're gonna bump that treble up. As well as the preamp, and we've got quite a bit of saturation going on right now.
I'm having a lot of fun, if you guys can't tell. This isn't even my preferred style of tone, but I think it sounds really good. Let's crank that gain all the way up just to see what the amp is capable of on its own with no additional help, and then we'll kick in some overdrives. Kind of reminds me of the modern channel on a two channel dual rectifier where it's just real low mid bass, kind of scoopy, a little bit muddy, but kind of has like a mean sound to it. Very boxy though, so let's pull that gain back. Let's kick in our MXR M77 Badass Modified Overdrive, and let's see how that sounds on the front of this amp. Very midi, let's pull the mids and the treble back a little bit. Uh, let's get that gain up again. Problem with kicking in an overdrive in front of this amp is it kind of seems to lose all low end, so we're just gonna straight up dime that low end. Okay, so still a little bit harsh. I'm gonna pull that presence back just a tad, trouble back just a tad. Pretty good, but overall, I don't like where the mids are. Um, let's try the Deadwell Duality again. We've got more low end, we've got more pleasing mids to my ears, they're not as honky. That sounds really good. That sounds incredible to me. That sounds great the way that it's set up right now. What happens if we scoop those mids out a little bit? I feel like the life of this amp is in that mid control because it really just kind of takes all of the push, all of the cut, all of the good sounding stuff out of it when you pull those mids back. Ah, it sounds really good the way that it's dialed in right now though. I really like the way that the Zamp sounds. Just wish it had a little bit more low end. Let's go down to D standard, play a riff. We'll play one riff on an active guitar and we'll call it a day on this baby. A little bit boxy for my taste. I feel like it could use some EQing, maybe some EQ in the loop in order to kind of take out some of those low mid boxy frequencies. I definitely like it better for standard and my personal, for my personal taste. Didn't sound terrible, but wasn't my favorite. Let's go over to an active guitar and then we'll call it a day. All right guys, we are on my Schecter PT SLS Elite with the Fishman Fluence Modern Pickups. 
ceramic in the bridge. We are on the active setting. I have turned the overdrives off and here's what we have. All right, so let's get a little bit more gain on this thing. All right, uh, let's play one riff and then we'll call it a day. Feel like we got a good tone going. Alright guys, that's going to do it for me today on the Soldano Hot Rod 50. What did you guys think about this amp? Let me know down in the comments if you ever played or owned this amp and if you have, what are your experiences with it? What speakers do you like it with? What overdrives do you like it with? Always curious to hear you guys' thoughts, so leave it down below in the comments so we can chat about it. If you liked the video, make sure to hit the like button on the way out, subscribe so you don't miss any more of my upcoming videos featuring awesome high gain amplifiers and a lot more. And if you want to support the channel and what it is I do here, down in the description of this video are all my support links, including my Sweetwater affiliate link. You get yourself something nice from the fine folks at Sweetwater. When you click that link, I get a little kickback and it costs you nothing extra. It really helps my channel out and I would really appreciate it. Really, consider adding your name to this list of incredible people by joining my Patreon community and supporting the channel that way. We're getting into some pedal giveaways very soon here, so if you guys want to get in on that, make sure to join up on the Patreon so you don't miss out. Also, I'll love you forever. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Kyle here again. We'll see you next time.